So now we'll start discussing design automation. So if we go back to the really olden days, um, everything was done by hand. So here you have the schematic of the Intel 4004, and you see you could put the schematic of the chip, I don't know if this is the whole thing, but at least a good part of it on a piece of paper. Kind of hard to do when you start having millions or billions of transistors, right? Um, they actually used to do uh, work with some CAD tools, some uh, computer-aided design tools, such as this mainframe CAD system, already back in, in, the, in the late 60s. And you see that they actually use this type of a digitizer or this type of a, uh, uh, of a stylus. Um, it was not exactly what is shipped in nowadays with these, uh, uh, with these uh, iPad Pros or with uh, Microsoft Surface, but it was the, the way that they used to put different coordinate, uh, coordinates into, into a system. Okay, um, everything was done by hand. As you can see, they used this type of millimeter paper to draw, um, hand draw gate layout. And um, here you can see that they had uh, an overlay, for example, of an 8088, which we will discuss uh, in the next lecture. Um, you can see that the whole chip kind of was, uh, uh, was printed out and plotted. Um, they used to use these things with this uh, like light table um, to make the actual design to, to de develop the photo masks with. And um, if you know the word tape out, which is when we actually send the files to the fabrication uh, plant nowadays, um, most people will tell you that tape out is uh, when they take a cassette, because it used to be that da big data was put on a cassette, they would record all of the data for the photo masks onto a uh, cassette and send it to the fabrication plant for uh, fabrication. But uh, I heard a story from uh, Professor Steve Kong who said that um, what they used to do is they used to go and take the uh, gym at the, at the local uh, high school and put all of the uh, plots for the, um, for the chip uh, on, the, on the floor of the basketball court. And they used to tape them together with, uh, with tape. And uh, that's how they would run their DRC and LVS checks. So tape out is actually the tape because you would tape together these plots and put them together. I'm not sure which story is correct, but I found a picture here of what I would call the original type of a tape out. So design automation today has changed a bit. We don't do anything basically by hand. We have tools for each level of design automation. So starting with design, high level synthesis tools or logic synthesis tools um, are at the RTL and system level. Um, then we have uh, schematic capture for designing transistors, layout uh, tools for doing the layout and and tools, uh, similar tools for doing PCB design. We have simulation tools that run simulations on the transistors um, using compact models. We have logic simulation tools that use uh, a Boolean uh, um, equivalents of the different types of uh, um, logic gates. We have hardware emulation, which I will discuss a bit later. And we have lower level things like technology CAD and field solvers that help us look at each and every atom where they're going and, and design devices. Um, we, of course, have an analysis and verification tools to see what we designed actually works. So, for example, functional verification we do to make sure that our digital design is doing what we, we decided and wanted it to. We have formal verification that brings some mathematical analysis tools to make sure um, that it is doing what we wanted. Equivalence checking is a type of formal verification that looks at our RTL and at our gate um, level uh, design and see that they're the same. Static timing analysis checks timing and we'll learn how to use that within this course. Physical verification is like DRC LVS, clock domain crossing, checks that we don't have any asynchronous uh, clock crossing. We also have validation for, for post-silicon, such as automatic test pattern generation or ATPG and built-in self-test or BIST, which help us put uh, a gain controllability and uh, observability on the chip after um, after fabrication, so we know that we're actually delivering good chips. And we also have different tools that do uh, things on mass preparation, such as ox opti optical proximity correction, or OPC, and other things that help us make the masks. And there are many, many, many more tools. I just wanted to show you that there is a large array of these, and we'll actually be using quite a few of them. Um, we're going to be using in this course a cadence flow, thanks to the Cadence Academic Network, which provides us at Bar Ilan University with a lot of support. And so we're going to do our RTL in Verilog. There is also VHDL, but we choose to use Verilog, which is the uh, main standard used in a lot of the high-tech industry. Um, 
And then we're going to do synthesis with Cadence Genus, Place and Route with uh, Cadence Inovis. And inside Cadence Inovis, we have several tools that are integrated. Tempest for timing, Voltus for power estimation, Parasitic Extraction with QRC or Qantas, and Clock Tree Synthesis with CCOP. And we're going to do a simulation with Cadence Incisive. So um, thanks to the Cadence Academic Network for supporting this course.